Well, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, March the 1st, uh, 2014. You've heard it right. The Ides of March. Coming up. They're not That's here right. Uh, besides the Ides of March, um, this Tuesday is Fat Tuesday, which means Mardi Gras and Carnival. And of course, March the 17th is St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Uh, my my uh, imported uh, Blackthorn weapons grade shillelagh from Ireland uh, that was uh, uh, given to me by XavierGifts.com. That's right, Xavier Gifts. Gifts. I do this every March. Uh, X A V I E R Gifts.com for the for the finest in uh, Irish imports. Um, Can you import a Celtic woman? Oh, you mean like a uh, like a mail order Russian bride or some or, or Asian? No, well, no. I don't even know how do you how you meet a Celtic woman. I guess you would go to a Irish pub. You sure you sure Celtic you want a Celtic woman. woman that hangs out all night in a at a pub? Well, no. You, uh, might you know, it's not a great place to meet. The, a woman, but uh, you know. Well, I'm I'm saying she might be she might be imbibing a, a wee bit too much for you, you know that that type of uh, Better. female. So I don't know. I mean, she might be a barmaid there or something, yeah. you know. You want to meet somebody sober? Well, barmaids in this part of the country tend to be very aloof. They don't really. They act like. Um, well, because they get hit on all the time. They act like. Um, they don't want to fraternize with the patrons of the bar. They they it's very standoffish. They're um, <coughs> it's almost like it's so okay. Women in general look at men as just based on the fact that they're born male. They look upon them uh, in a negative light. You know they they demonize them. Why? But a bar but a bar t a bartender a female bartender. There's two strikes against you. For number one, you're male, and number two, you're in a bar, so they automatically think you're full of shit and you're a liar and mm. you're full of booze. But hey, guess what? Probably right. Guess what? They work there. <laughs> they're in there too. You know, I mean, they're in there too. So, but anyway, uh, let me start. Uh, we're in for a treat because later on we have a uh, for um, for the show we have a, um, a what do you call a, a, a video uh, visit on video a visit with William H Morrow the third hour voiceover specialist so we did this time no slideshow we have them on video but let me get over let me get the formalities over with. Before I forget, welcome to Progressive Discussions. This is Progressive Discussions, the 1st of March 2014, uh, coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Megalife 21. And I would like to formally pipe aboard my illustrious co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored which is what we're all about, in 1977. With my authentic bosun's whistle. Arr, arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship censored, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling, sir? Okay, today. This I week. I just want this winter over with. We're having another snowstorm Monday, I believe. Tomorrow. The temperature is supposed to really plummet very soon, I hear. Afterward. Tomorrow, today is 37. Tomorrow might be 38. But then it started. It's it, it's not going to get as low as, you know, is it going to be experiencing. It's going to be at a single digits or with a wind mm, windshield no. factor of... Uh, <laughs> No, I don't think it's going to be that low again. Well, I don't know. You must be looking at a different station than I look at. You know, uh, I well, now they're saying only 68 inches of snow here. 
keep on changing their forecasts. Yes, they do. Hmm. I mean, it was six plus a while ago, and Central Jersey a little less. So, you know, I mean, uh, weather people are not really accurate except for like two days, maybe. No, well, don't they all get their information from the National Weather Bureau? And their computer models. So what they're what these uh, networks are doing is they're paying for their personality in the way they present the weather. Or if you're looking at what was that guy in the old days that uh, Lloyd Lindsay Young? No, I'm talking older than that. Tex Antoine. Yeah, that's one of them. Uh, doc, Doctor. Um, Dr. Frank Field? Frank Field is older too, but this guy was a, uh, I don't know, he was a peculiar looking guy. Many of them are. Uh, that was Lloyd Lindsay Young. Those he's, were the days when go, they were... Hello, and he mentioned the town. Yeah. Yeah. When they were all men. You didn't have the women. Well, what, now, I was what I was going to say, if you if you happen to be watching a, uh, a Latin TV station, yes, and, you're exactly. wa and you're watching the news They're all women. in Spanish, and you're and usually the uh, person giving the weather report is a young very attractive uh latin female latina with large breasts hanging and a out big ass cleavage the bubble butt <laughs> and big jugs just you know yeah they know how to plot just know how to just play it. plopping out you know just just they're right there in front of her yep whether they they be implants or not they got them or push up bra but they, they, the Latin stations use um, uh, the fact that sex sells more than the uh, the American stations because heaven forbid we should do that here with all these right wing Republicans in Washington. They they wouldn't like the idea that you know that women are are showing their cleavage all over the uh, well they don't like the idea television that, networks that women are on television in the first place. They should be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. They are so... And washing the toilets out. These Republicans from the red states are so back in the day dinosaur... Uh, 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 their mentality is so far back and outdated. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we got some moron in the neighborhood blasting their stereo outside. And that's with the door closed. And that's with the door closed. You know, assuming or being inconsiderate and not caring about anybody else in the neighborhood, you know, just blasting their music. They're talking loudly out there. This is what I'm, I refer to as just selfish low Static. class. Static, baby. Self, no, Static. selfish low class people. What about the ones that Don't, don't sugarcoat them, man. What? What about the ones that ride around in the car with the big woofers, baby? Same idea, the same concept. Uh -huh. No, that's more of a. That's more of they an. They want you. To that's more to of an. That's more of an attention getter. Kids do that. Young boys do that. So the girls here, they're they're, they're you know, the the streets vibrating from from their uh, sound system, and they get attention. They get, get the chicks to look at them. In this case, well, what if the chicks don't like their music? In this case, they sound like a bunch of hippies. You know, they're like talking loud and obnoxiously, and they're blasting their obnoxious music at a loud level. Wait a minute, he was playing Neil Young last night. Wait a minute, this guy plays every night. Now and then, and nobody calls the cops. Does he do it at night, or is he does no, he do it early night? He does it. He don't do it at eleven. People. Crack. I don't want to hear this crap. What if somebody's studying for an exam? What if they it's go to heavy school? metal, man? I thought you liked it, but not not like up to a certain uh, uh, audio level, a certain volume. What if somebody's studying for an exam? Well, maybe he's. he's I can never finish my sentences in this in this damn because show. Because maybe he's getting rid of the little hairs in his ears, so he'll see. Be he, he makes light of it because he's like he's more to the left. He's more liberal than I am. He's more live and let live, you know, and, and you know, just everybody's everybody's a person, even even if they're a scumbag. 
everybody deserves this, that, and the other thing. Low blood sugar. Yeah, let me I mean, tell, let me tell you something. I like heavy metal, but I'm not going to blast it so the whole friggin' neighborhood's going to hear me. You know what I mean? I'm not a show-off when it comes to the music. I just put it so loud so I can hear it and not, you know, subject the whole world to my music. Like, I'm, like I was saying, somebody could be studying for an exam. Somebody could, um, for instance, be working in a graveyard shift and, and they have to sleep during the day. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, scenarios here, you know. Uh, but anyway, let me get this over with. Uh, the Chiseler's Hall of Shame, okay, uh, which a lot of what I'm going to, well, actually all of what I'm going to uh, mention here, all the names I'm going to mention, will be connected to the show I do with William H. Morrow the third, the video show. And I will fill in uh, Dr. Bill during his lunch, which, you know, we will be off the air on break. Because I, there's no sense in me doing it twice, you know, subjecting you viewers to hear the same story twice. Otherwise, I would just tell the story now. You know, um, because I will be discussing it with, with William. Uh, William Morrow. All right, Chisler's Call of Shame list. This guy's getting, he's even louder than he was before. Boy, there's a lot of low-class hippie fucks around here, I swear. I don't think it's getting on can uh, mic. Fucking low-class people. Anyway, you know what? If it walks like a duck and looks like a duck and sounds like a duck, and if the neighborhood kind of looks like, like there might be people like this, then there are. There are. Believe me. Okay, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Obamacare HMO sucks. Okay, uh, did an interview. Somebody contacted me. Did a full interview with this person. Uh, per the individual went through an ordeal recently. Uh, actually, uh, What's today? Friday, uh, Saturday, thir Thursday, I believe. Uh, yes, went through the ordeal on Thursday. Did the, the interview on Friday. Okay, HMOs in general, whether they be connected with, with Obamacare or not, they suck. Believe me, PPO is what. Obamacare should have been associated with because then you don't have to uh, pick the doctor that's in network. You can choose your doctor. And if you're a senior citizen, that's very important to be able to go to the doctor you like. Okay. Quest Diagnostics Laboratory. Typical um, American. In healthcare, they don't give a shit about you. They just care about their bottom line. Uh, customer service, as far as at the labs, not the corporate office. Customer service at the lab sites, they sucked a big one. Terrible, terrible service. Um, for some reason, I, I can't speak for all parts of the United. States, but a lot the, the the people that work in the medical profession, the insurance people, the uh, receptionists, etc., etc., they're basically mostly women. They're all actually they all are. They're very grouchy, very cantankerous in the health industry. They're they're they snap at you. They're very abrupt. There's no smiles, no apologies. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll get into the details later. Horizon of New Jersey, hey, man, it's an insurance company, what can I say? <laughs> Don't expect um, something like an insurance company to do the 
fighting all the time. Um, you know, they for some reason, in this case, they only, they only deal with um, a particular lab. They only deal with Lab Corp. They do not deal with Quest. Quest is a big, big company with many branches. Why they only deal with Lab Corp? You know, for people to get their blood tested, Horizon. I'll take a wild guess and say it's they're doing it for the lowest cost. Kickbacks. Somebody's getting something from um, Horizon is giving kickbacks to them, or they're giving kickbacks to Horizon. In other words, it's it's profit oriented. You believe? Crony capitalism. Crony capitalism. When they make deals and say, well, Horizon uh, Blue Cross Blue, Sh Blue Shield of New Jersey is only going to deal with LabCorp. We're not going to, oh, you, you want to go to Quest Diagnostics? It's a big company. No, no, no. You got to go to LabCorp. All right. So they are members this week. Inductees into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. Moving along, because I don't have much to read here. Um, uh, I noticed the term shovel-ready jobs have been floating around lately. And I, I don't, I'm not totally aware of what that means, but all I have to say based on my hunch is um, Washington, or the, or the Republican Congress, or whoever came up with this cute little term here, shovel-ready jobs, you can take your shovel-ready job and shove it. The problem was... Get it shovel-ready, shove it. Explain to me. Obama... Dr. Bill. Stimulus. What is this sh crap? Supposedly, shovel-ready just means it's ready to go. It doesn't mean Obama that... Obama stimulus. Low, it doesn't mean low-end jobs? No. Where you have to dig a ditch? No. For a living? Why did they use shovel? Because it means ready to go. It's, it's, it's a it's, job ready oh, to go. It's a degrading word. When, when you think of shovel ready, you mean, hey, I'll give you a job, buddy. You're unemployed. How about digging in a ditch? No. The Obama stimulus was geared to go to shovel-ready jobs. Fucking stupid. But they man. weren't there. Even in green energy, etc. You mean good-to-go jobs? Good-to-go jobs. They weren't there. Okay. So the money was wasted. Alright. Like I hear you. Solyndra. Be careful of that pile. Well, where the hell you want me to put it? I have no idea. So, right there. There's always... Fucking obstacles, man. Put it uh, over there. I got no room to put it over there. Yeah, I don't want to put it over there. there. Thank you. I don't want to put it there. It's well, gonna. It's Do you gonna. Want this to fall down. No, no, I, I don't. But it's gonna no, slide. It's gonna plan. slide off there anyway. So. All right. Well, it's a. It's a clipboard. With any luck, maybe a Republican will be laying on the floor while it falls. <laughs> It no. won't because they don't get in this house. That's true. That's true. Um, shovel ready simply means jobs that are readily available, and it, it's not. It's not true. Is what you're saying? There are shovel ready jobs, but I'm just saying that the Obama stimulus went into a lot of un shovel ready jobs, and the Republicans use that again. Them. It's not. It's. It, it doesn't sound very appealing. That word. I, I don't know what jerk off thought of it, but shovel ready sounds like a degrading manual labor. Oh, well, that's not what it somebody is. Somebody that pushes pushes a broom or something. You know. No. Uh, uh, what do they call that? Unskilled, uneducated. Those labor. jobs are gone. They're outsourced, right? They're outsourced. They got Chinese and Bangladoris 
and et cetera, to do those jobs. Bangla now. Bangladesh, yeah, Bangladores. Yeah. In the arms. Okay. In the arms. Oh, bang! That's exactly where they get it in the ass. What do they? What do they give them? Fourteen cents an hour with no benefits. All right, listen. Well, they uh, are. You know, they, they are uh, growing countries. They're not. Uh, they're not up to speed industrial. Oh, emer like emerging, e emerging, emerging countries, emerging yeah. third world countries, economies. Yes, like the office jobs are in the Philippines now, and they give them anywhere from fifty cents to a dollar an hour for your United States uh, customer service call center, mm -hmm. inbound call center jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's what happened, man. Mm -hmm. they okay, I have a little testimonial. Um, I don't. I'm not sure why uh, I have been getting these terrible allergies all year round. It could be uh, uh, climate change, but um, an inner voice told me to start taking optimal amounts of uh, uh, not the not the synthetic dry version, but the natural fish liver oil versions of um, vitamin A and D, along with high amounts of vitamin C with rose hips. Anyway, ever since I started taking the um, uh, mega strength cod liver oil, Norwegian cod liver oil, and getting in at least uh, 10,000 international units of A, uh, which is retin retinol, okay, uh, animal source vitamin A, and uh, uh, the same type of vitamin D, uh, let's see, four capsules, uh, I'd say close, close to a, a thousand, I would say, uh, international units of D and um, taking the vitamin C also. The terrible allergies that I've been having are like, have almost vanished. I have minimal symptoms and I don't take any allergy medication anymore. No Benadryl, no Allegra, no, no uh, Zyrtec, no nothing. No Loratadine. I haven't touched an allergy medicine and it, it's all due I feel it's all due to the A and D and the vitamin C. Uh, maybe the A and D plays a bigger role, and uh, maybe the elderberry that's in my my antioxidant tea formula. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But the point of the fact is that uh, the way, when you build up your immunity, you'll do away with allergy. Well, I went from taking allergy medication once to twice a day to down to taking it zero times a day since I've been on this protocol. So it must be something with the protocol. So if I'm taking a Benadryl every single day and then I experiment and I decide, you know what, screw it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the vitamin C. I try the vitamin C and the vitamin Vitamin C is an antihistamine, just like, like the Benadryl. Then I decided, hey, A and D is extremely important for the immune system. Mm -hmm. Why don't I order the natural A and D mm -hmm. from Norwegian cod liver oil? And it worked even better. Now it's like, oh no, I don't think that's real wood. Come on, that's with pressed board. Well, knock on wood, my symptoms have practically vanished. So, um, it's a little holistic health talk input here. Personal testimonial made by myself, James P. Madonna. Now it's time to sink our teeth into these readings. And uh, from what I hear, uh, uh, some more uh, additional information came up with the bridge gate, I hear. 
Yeah, like what? I haven't read the article. I just heard that additional information came up with Bridgegate. With the subpoena, with the, you know, the documents. Now it sounds as if Governor Christie is having trouble balancing the budget because of the huge pension payouts to the state's retired teachers, firemen, and policemen. Why is he always attacking the dedicated ones whom we need the most? Just stop giving uh, millions to his rich buddies, that's all. Well, you see, that's the easy way. That's the way that they haven't been doing for over these 30-some years, and that's why states and, 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 and cities and counties and everything are in the problems they're in. You know what? They haven't been taxing the rich and corporations at their proper level. And it's better for all these years. Tax vacation for 30 years. It's better to take away a pension from a guy who's been working for 25, 30 years as a fireman. Dedicating his whole life to public service and busting his ass and t stealing from the firemen rather than taking it from the person who doesn't need it, which is the rich. Speaking of. Uh, tax uh, vacations. Did you see that banner where it said, uh, "If if churches now mind you, the big churches, mega churches, including people like Pat Robertson, love to stick their Pinocchio nose into politics. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're going to stick your nose into politics as an evangelist or a minister." or whatever you want to call yourself, then you should be taxed if you're going to interfere in politics. should be taxed anyway. But the banner, the banner says if these churches pay taxes, income taxes, you wouldn't have to worry about where the money's coming from for food stamps or for the, for the homeless and for the, you know, the, the, all this money would be there for the poor and the, and and for food stamps it would it would cover the poor period and these churches are supposed to be um promoting the word of god and how can they do that when they don't know the word of god so instead of hoarding money the mega churches and the evangelists instead of hoarding all this money the uh, uh, feeding the poor would not be a problem today if the churches were taxed. It not be, would not be a problem if the rich and the corporations were taxed at their proper level. Which includes a mega church. And churches. Okay? I mean, not the little, but little pipsqueak little but uh, chapel. Getting the churches uh, their tax exempts, that's, that's a little difficult to do, but right now we can tax the rich and the corporations in one moment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Besides, uh, we just had in Wallington, a uh, city over here in New Jersey, yes. a fireman who's been on the job for quite some time die. In a fire, fell off the roof or whatever. Oh, for God's sakes! So he's been a fire dedicated man. Him, him, and his t two sons work for the fire department in Wallington. And and he, af right. after being a fireman for probably decades, yes, it was he, he, quite he, some time. He died as, uh, in in the line of duty. Now, he won't get his pension. Willie. Someone will steal that pension. Yeah. Do I allow for a tax break for the rich? Yep. 
sacrifices, uh, which, by the way, was the word that Chris Christie used recently in his State of the State address. He used it again. We, uh, we have to make sacrifices. But when he says we have to make sacrifices or, or making sacrifices, it never includes him or his rich friends. That's correct. That pension money is our money that we invested while we were working to educate and protect the people in our state. Perhaps he should think beyond the innocent widows, widowers, the disabled, who have dedicated their lives to public service and examine, their, examine the inequities of providing high salaries and on necessary expenditures to administrative positions. Everyone thinks state workers get free health benefits. But what they neglect to realize is that many have paid into health care costs throughout their careers. You know, doing what's fair and doing what's right to me is more important than any um, partisan politics. Uh, I mean, just, just do the right thing. For right, the just, right people. To the, with the right people. Oh, that's what being fair is about. Right. Oh, no. It's not being fair if you tax the rich. Well, wait a minute now. Uh, in 19, uh, uh, we have a constitutional amendment uh, to, to collect income tax. That means a, a tax on income. Thus, if you make a lot of income, you pay a lot of tax. Bingo! Simple! Progressive tax system. Now, when a Republican in Congress bitch and whine and cry that uh, Obamacare, let's see what they say, Obamacare is going to cost jobs because companies are going to start laying people off. Uh, hey, the job creators are not creating in the United States anyway. Yeah, and even the CBO uh, job losses that they say say will be like 500,000, but it would also provide 900,000 jobs. They simply, it's a wash. simply do not want to do diddly dick for the mainstream masses of America and the poor. They just don't want to do anything for the poor, period, which means want to kill off the poor Look. because if you don't help the poor they perish right so back in the great depression right the communists the socialists populists whatever mm -hmm. were very popular at that time the corporations were scared the rich were scared they were scared. Of what could happen. This is a democracy. When all the people get together and vote, they can get anything they want done. They can punish the corporations. They can punish the rich. The rich and the corporations knew this. And they worked stealthily to get rid of the communists. Get rid of the socialists, get rid of the populists, and all that crap that they were selling. And look what they have today. They own the government. Now, Jesse Ventura posted a question on his Facebook page, Off the Grid. He says, my question is, if we were to uh, create an additional amendment 
to the Constitution, uh, what would you like that new amendment to be? Uh, one man made a smart uh, um, statement. He says, uh, make sure that all the laws, that every amendment must apply to everyone regardless of their financial situation as a citizen, whether they be rich, poor, middle class, whatever laws they make in Washington, based on the Constitution, must apply to everyone, including them. And nobody is above the law. Smart thing to say. I said... It's already supposed to be that way. Right. I said that uh, any changes... <coughs> So, I, I mean, I just came off the top of my head. I says any changes to the Constitution can only be made by a popular national vote no. during an election of the American no, people. No, there's a way of doing it. How do you do it? How do you, you do? How do you do it honestly? Uh, allowing car. You have to have over thirty-five Fuck. states. Vote on it in their legislature. You to trust do the, it. you trust the politicians to change the constitution? No, that's why it hasn't been done since. Uh, which we let's see. I never get to finish the sentence. The, we, there the, is a process to, to do it. Why well, you? Why do you? Why I want to go with a process that is because that, that's what that, it is that, in the that constitution. Is, that is proven to be crooked. That's what it is in the constitution. Why not let the popular vote of the of we the people vote on changes to the constitution? Because the constitution doesn't say that. That's why. Well, this what is what you want to do. You want to make, you want the constitution to have a fact in one instance, then you want to change the constitution in another instance. What are you going to do? No. This was Jesse's question. If, if there was no, an Jesse's extra, question had nothing to do with that. If there was an, ex, an additional, uh, he said 18th, I think. If there was an additional amendment created, what would you like that to but be? But he understands the process to creating an, an amendment. You know, it's like... It's, you didn't. It's like, it's like listening to a, a goddamn car dealer commercial. It's, it's all... You know, why? You know, life is really a lot more simpler and straightforward than people make it out to be. Yeah, it's my, it's, it's <laughs> pure and simple if you obey the Constitution. There is a process within the Constitution for making amendments. Okay, what did G. W. Bush do when he tampered with the Constitution? He didn't make an amendment. He he. Change something, right? No, he didn't. Well, oh, he disregarded. He overrode it. it. He he. Okay, he dis as Mr. Obama has done with his NADA. There's there lies the NSA uh, spying is lies, overriding. There the lies the problem. People are overriding it. That's correct. The Fourth Amendment has been overridden. What do you think, <laughs> Mr. Snowden? told us about. Yeah, and he left his family uh, and his life as he knew it uh, to uh, to warn the American people. He's a criminal. He's a terrorist. He's a traitor. Oh, the Pentagon wants to take him out. Okay. And they can do it. They took out JFK. Okay? Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King knew a little bit too much, right? And Robert F. Kennedy. Okay, they Ma took them Malcolm out. X. They took them out. Malcolm X too. All right. <clears throat> when you get a little too rambunctious, they take you out. In other words, when people call us conspiracy theorists a bunch of nuts, they are unaware that many of these conspiracy theories are fact. That's correct, and it took. 30, 40 years sometimes to prove it because they have covered it up so well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I was in a discussion about the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, with a friend. This is a good reading, you know, it ties into what I'm going to talk about with William Morrow. As a businessman with 12 employees, he said Obamacare has built-in problems. He's a, he is a middle-class small business owner, is what you're talking about. Yeah, the ones that create jobs. Those that are real job creators, man. It's those local Main Street guys and, and gals that start uh, businesses. Twelve employees, you know. When I mentioned the single-payer system, his response was that under that concept, that one would not see their doctors, would have limited care. Informing him that those are just rumors, I asked if his father, who was on Medicare, had any of those aforementioned problems. His response was a flat-out no. So shouldn't everyone be entitled to the same care? Why should universal coverage be age 65 and beyond? Why not day one and beyond? My friend said, that was the simplest way to understand and accept it. Medicare for all would solve every problem, answer every question, and save 300 and thirty-five billion dollars a year. Oh, but he had to. He had to compromise with the uh, Republicans and come up with this privatized corporations. Privatized Obamacare. We're dealing with insurance companies. You can do the math. Nah. Okay. That's Obama had a compromise. You right. know, just like when Nancy Pelosi was in every other word out of her mouth was bipartisanship, compromise, bipartisanship, sick, suck ass, suck up, kiss ass. I mean, uh, when people do not vote for a Republican, they don't vote for you to compromise with the Republicans. They vote for change. Not compromising. Yeah, but you're in a government body. And to get things done, you have to compromise. Two-party system, uh, yeah, do you have to? If you want the numbers, you have to. What if, uh, oh, if you don't have enough numbers to override the Republicans in Washington. That's correct. You have no choice but to compromise. That's correct. And that's why they compromise. That's correct. But every great, <clears throat> most of them anyway, not Medicare, and I believe Medicaid and stuff like that, even Social Security, or as a result of compromises. Mm, no, they would they would have had nothing. They, you would have been a, practically a slave, and your kids would have been working as slaves too. If but you, fortunately, you, things like Medicare and uh, you know the, the Democrats had the numbers. Yeah. You know, and and great people like FDR. Harry Truman, you know, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, who was the last of the good, good guy Republicans. The last of the uh, uh, Republicans who had a surplus. Oh, yeah. That's no right. deficit. That's much right. like Mr. Clinton. Okay? Yeah, well, of course, GW screwed, screwed up that surplus. That's correct. He screwed that up royally. That's correct. And his two unpaid wars, Medicare Part D, and the, one of the biggest boondoggles, maybe not money-wise, but Homeland Security. I think Homeland Security was an excuse to apply fascist stormtrooper tactics tactics on the American people. Well, it certainly was not 
put into a being to uh, like uh, be able to talk to the FBI and talk to the CIA and have them all work nice together to protect us from terrorists. That was certainly not why it was put into effect. How about something like crony capitalism? That's a lot of jobs there. Yeah, if you know somebody. If you or Republican. If you suck up to a Republican. The number of far-right militias, extremist patriot groups, and hate organizations in the United States dropped last year for the first time since 1999. Mm -hmm. But the organizations are becoming leaner and meaner. The center, the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center said, they attributed the drop to an improving economy and a gridlocked Congress that made little progress on flashpoint issues such as gun control and immigration. Oh, boy. And those extremist militias are well armed. Only if, uh, um, only if progressive liberals uh, had malicious, 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 they don't. They just, they just want to, they want to use intellect in everything they do. Lot. You can't. You can't fight the forces of evil with uh, negotiation and intellect. I'm. I'm sorry to say. You can't fight them with evil either. Well, if you if, can't fight fight evil with evil, if you take them then out, then you become evil. If you take them out, they're no longer. They no longer exist, right? Well, you can't take them out in a. Uh, Civilized society. Who says it requires civilization to? Unless you're the CIA. To rid the FBI. But we we all know who they're working for. Yeah. They're not working for we the people, are they? That's correct. They aren't. The national guards and uh, the police are not working for we the people. Otherwise, if they were, those Goldman Sachs. Tax boys would be in prison right now. Oh, yeah. And the uh, banks. So would Mr. Bush and his uh, 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 friend Cheney. War crimes, right? War crimes. War crimes. That's correct. They would be in prison too. Impeached and convicted of war crimes. Well, they weren't in office. So they didn't get. Well, what I what I mean, impeachment was what I mean a is their dastardly deeds took place, I believe, when they were still. Of course, in but office. I'm saying the punishment came would come after they're out of office. But they sure went after Bill Clinton with that Monica Lewinsky deal. The and white water, and this water, and that yeah. water, and this water, and. And that, and that kind of Paula Jones, and it's it, yeah, yeah. They were relentless, and, uh, right. uh, um, yeah, they were relentless. And all made up. Anita all Hill made. didn't, uh, get what she wanted with Clarence Thomas. No, because they were too strong. The right wing was too strong in their comebacks. That's the problem. The problem is Truth. The Democrats undermined. don't have the friggin' backbone that, that the, the, the right-wing nuts have. Uh. Now, speaking of the uh, Constitution okay. being overridden 
-hmm. undermined, etc. The Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday that the police may search a home without a warrant when two occupants disagree about allowing officers to enter. So they could, they could, uh, they have the right to trespass on your property, come into your home without a warrant, which means it's just like an intruder. You know, I mean. But they don't have the right. They, the Fourth it, Amendment does not give them the right. This is I just said. Yeah. This is another example, example of overriding yes. the Constitution. And the resident who refuses access is then arrested. Justice Samuel Alito wrote the court six to three decision holding that an occupant may not object to a search when he is not at home. So they can break into your house when you're not at home. Okay? Plant bugging devices. Without the warrants. Search. Plant bugging devices. So on and so Go on. Go through your garbage. Go through your uh, computer hard drive or something. Mm -hmm. Do a backup of your computer hard drive and take everything steal your private information, yeah, go through your garbage. Uh, no, Don't call I, that a police state. Yeah. Fascist well, state. Well, uh, no politician is supposed to be above the Fourth Amendment uh, or the law, unless you're, unless you're a damn dictator, right? Exactly. Yeah. Police found a shotgun and ammunition. So? and a knife when they searched the Los Angeles apartment that Walter Fernandez shared with his girlfriend Roxanne Rogers. People in, in America, like also other countries, people have a right to bear arms. <clears throat> Fernandez told police they could not enter. But shortly after his arrest, officers returned to the apartment and persuaded his girlfriend to let them in. Isn't that similar to... Cop? How did they get in to arrest the guy? Yeah, you're right about that. Unless he was out in the front porch or something. No, I don't I, think so. I mean, is, isn't, that, isn't that also similar to to somebody getting pulled over on the highway and the cops suddenly say open up your unlock the trunk of your car uh -huh. and get and have flashlights and go under the seats go uh -huh. under the glove compartment go go searching in the trunk say let let me see your wallet look into somebody's wallet look into somebody's wallet don't you need a warrant to do those yes. things that's your per that's your personal space according to the constitution so those cops that did that in New Jersey also uh, broke the Fourth Amendment. But what did George W. Bush say about the Constitution? It's well, just a goddamn piece of paper. Well, he's a sociopath anyway, right? Yeah, but this travels on in the in the presidents. It's not just him. They all do the same and thing. And who, let me think, who's behind all this wickedness? Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, do you think it could be corporate CEOs that send their lobbyists to Washington that are paying people off and are behind all this? Hey, there's a lot of people behind all this stuff. Well, they're elitists. I, I okay. will take a wild guess on that. Right? Mm. The court ruled five to three in 2006 that when two occupants who disagree about letting the police in are present the objecting occupant prevails hmm 
no one it should be above the Fourth Amendment or any law. No one. But then again, people get paid off. The mouse is getting paid off. Oh, oh, you mean Chubsy Ubsy? No, he's not chubby. Oh, that's right. The other. Uh, we're talking about Steve, the black and white of Sylvester and Felix. Uh, bless his heart. He's trying to open the door. Uh, he could do it. Yeah, the uh, Felix uh, and Sylvester looking black and white cat. Uh, Felix was cuter than Sylvester. Sylvester spit when he talked. Felix the cat. The wonderful, wonderful cat. That's uh, the, the first. Don't so much, your heart will break. Bag of tricks? Yeah. Something about a bag, bag of tricks. tricks. He had a bag of tricks. His friend was Poindexter, right? The, no, The point, geek. No, that was the uh, the dog and, and Poindexter, right? Poindexter. The scientist from the, the future? No, Poindexter had black frame glasses, like... I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that one. That, yeah. Now, the young kids now, now it's in style. Now they want Poindexter glasses. There's no friggin' way I'm going to wear those. Uh, I love those. Look like Sergeant Bilko, like Phil Silvers. It's more like... Um, uh, the, the military glasses. Uh, the singer. Buddy Holly? Buddy Holly. Yeah. Now they're in style. They used to make fun of me when I was a kid wearing those damn eyeglasses. They used to call well, me. You see, you didn't. Poindexter, they picked out. I called you four eyes back then. You didn't assert yourself. Look, it's fashion now. Because right. Somebody asserted themselves. Uh, if I would have asserted myself, I would have got sent to the principal's office huh? and he would have suspended me. Or punching people in the face. Or you could have said you've been bullied. I could have reported it. Uh, yeah, but so many kids are mean, you know, when you grow up. I mean, kids what are you going to do? Mean. They are mean. Okay, they are mean. I, you know what I would do? If I had a son, I send, not only would I send him to uh, Little League, because baseball players, they make a fortune. Fortune. And they don't work all year, and if they make a fortune and they love their daddy, they're going to send that big, big fat check home if they love their daddy. Um, and not only that, I send the kids immediately at a young age to martial arts and to teach him kick his friggin' ass. Anybody tries to bully you, bloody him up. That's fighting evil with evil. Yeah, but they the bully respects you if you get if he gets his ass kicked. He Maybe. respects you. Maybe. Maybe. What are you gonna be a victim? See, this is what kills no, me about ultra left liberalism. Oh, look at me! Oh, I don't want to hit nobody. Jesus didn't punch nobody out. Just sit there and be a victim. Uh, I'm a victim. Beat me up. Take my lunch money. There are not just two answers to problems. It's like they don't, they, they definitely don't believe in the death penalty. Hey, if somebody tortures your loved one but and why? kills them, they damn right you want to have them put to death. But that's only when you are in a position to know that that person actually did that. Well, you got to prove it. You can't know that from here. I don't know. There's how many people are death row right now? You gotta go to court. I don't know who the hell is guilty and not guilty. You gotta have a trial. You gotta they had trial. Without a shadow of a doubt. What do you think they're there for? Then what kind of jackasses were at this in this court? Jackasses. Well, I guess they're. You don't believe anything in the politics from, uh, like, Republicans and stuff. Well, how come you believe attorney generals, uh, uh, like uh, uh, here in New Jersey, Christie's uh, attorney general? Are we going to believe what he comes up with? 
Yeah. He's under Christie's control. Christie's lawyers are paid by the taxpayers. That's correct. Well, I guess what you do is you follow a process. You report it to the principal and say, I want to report uh, bullying by such and such. And uh, if that doesn't do any good, then you use uh, Taekwondo or Kung Fu or whatever. You gotta, uh, you gotta disfuse. Hold on. You gotta disfuse it before it escalates. Now, what happens every time Billy Jack, David Carradine, oh, I love those or guys. whatever, got into the last momentum and had to fight back? They usually, what did they do? Before they that. usually won. Yeah, of course they won, but what did they do before that? They tried to disfuse it in a non-violent way. Correct. Well, that's what I just said. They tried to avoid it. You can't negotiate with everybody. Like, everybody is not susceptible to negotiation. To so that was a third way to answer to rational, the problem. To was rational thinking. Rather than victim or kill. Oh, you don't, you don't, See, well, there, are, there are other answers to problems. All right, if somebody's calling you, ah, you Poindexter geek, you four-eyed freak, and they do it every day, and uh, you tell them, uh, hey, listen, better shut up. I'm telling you right now, you better shut up. And they don't stop. Then you karate their ass. Or you put them in a submission hold, MMA. Or you jujitsu them. In other you words, take their energy, your bad energy, and use it again. I think that's Aikido. I think that's whatever. Steven Seagal's uh, thing. Whatever, you, whatever martial arts you're, you, uh, are, you are proficient at, you, you do it. Use it. All right, listen. Sink your teeth and back and. Still speaking of the Constitution, the Constitution gives to Congress the control of the nation's purse. Our annual procedure has become, although not constantly in recent years, that the President submits a budget. This budget represents the planned expenditures of the departments in fulfilling their duties to provide the services to defend the country and to support the smooth transfer of goods and services among the states. It is then the responsibility of Congress to approve or modify It then has the further responsibility to provide the revenue to pay for these expenditures through taxes or borrowing through the sale of treasury bonds. If the expenses of the country exceed the revenues, it is by the action of Congress, not the President. for the deficits under Barack Obama. Not Barack Obama. Correct! But who's getting the blame? Barack Obama. Thank you. Because they want him out. And they don't want they don't want a Democrat or a black man in the White House. If we have amassed a large national debt, it is because Congress authorized expenditures on wars, roads, or pensions without providing taxes to pay for them. The president cannot spend without the approval of Congress. So the current national deficits and the debt were with the approval 
of Kant. It's a shame. But is that what the God, the uh, propaganda says? Excuse me, I didn't hear you. Is that what the propaganda says? Propaganda is full of lies. Exactly. I have a little short one here, but I. And then we'll go to break. Yeah. Okay. Go to lunch. Okay. A Northern California couple out walking their dog. Yeah. On their property, stumbled across a modern-day bonanza. Really. Ten million in rare mint condition gold coins buried in the shadow of an old tree. Really? Nearly all of the 1,427 coins dating from 1847 to 1894 mm -hmm. are in uncirculated mint David Hall, co-founder of Professional Coin Grading Service of Santa Ana, which recently authenticated them. Although the face value of the gold pieces adds up to about $27,000, some of them are so rare that coin experts say they could fetch nearly one Price, yeah. but still, they are. You know, like if you, uh, if you have a rookie baseball card, like yeah. a, like a uh, Mickey Mantle rookie or Roger Maris rookie baseball card, they look at the condition of that card. Well, of course, it, it adds to the value. Of it. Yeah. Numismat numismatics is, is a funny word. It's like the scientific word for coin collection. As a uh, the, it has, little has been said about the middle-aged couple other than that they have lived for several years on the rural property in North California, gold country, where the coins were found. They have no idea who put them there. They want to remain anonymous part to avoid a renewed gold rush to their property by modern day prospectors armed with metal detectors. Oh boy. Okay, Chief. That's it. We're going to go to break, right? Correct. We're going to lunch. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic deal. No, no, is lunch, and uh, we will uh, then. I will be visiting William H. Morrill the uh, third for a video show with him um, at his location, and uh, then we will return after Bill Morrill. We will go to uh, commercial promo, uh, and then come back here for the remaining half of our show, okay? And then uh, you'll hear the story about the gentleman I interviewed concerning his health care ordeal. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrill III. How are you feeling today, sir? All right. Thanks, how's everybody? Uh, besides with your hands, of course, you're feeling. But uh, uh, a, um, one of our listeners, our viewers also, had a, a problem 
that occurred today, and he, he contacted me right away. Uh, it has to do with Obamacare, it has to do with the American health care system. All right, this, this individual had an appointment to have blood drawn for a complete blood test. His doctor gave him the uh, prescription, and he went. Uh, so what happened was he took the blood, he fasted after 9 p.m., took the blood, and an inner voice told the person to call the insurance company to, to make sure that the insurance company would cover the blood test. Lo and behold, his Obamacare um, horizon of New Jersey did not cover cover Quest Diagnostics Laboratory. So meaning your appointment was canceled for this guy or what? They, no, they, he already had the blood drawn. So now Quest Diagnostics happens to be a big company. They have many branches. So he assumed that since Quest Diagnostics is a big company, that his Horizon Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield would pay for it. No, they only pay for LabCorp. So he called uh, Horizon of New Jersey, and they told him, "Go. We can't get a hold of anybody because a voicemail keeps on picking up. No person was picking up at the lab. Where, nobody. At Quest? Yeah, at the lab. Nobody would pick up the phone. So the main, the corporate office says, go there right now in person, and told the the, the man to cancel his blood test." So he drove all the way back. Where was Quest that you were trying to go? Well, this was, uh, this was a lab. Um, it was uh, 385 Prospect Avenue, Hackensack, New Jersey. They have many branches. He went there, and he says, please, immediately cancel my blood test because my insurance doesn't pay for it. Now, mind you, when he made the appointment, he did not get a human being on the phone. He got an automated voice, so he could not give any detail, he could not ask any detail. So he called, he went there rather, he says, please cancel my, my blood test. Okay. He, they said, okay, we'll do it, no problem. He, here's your, here's your, um, your prescription from your doctor, handed the prescription back to the person. person says, are you sure it's all canceled? He always makes sure. Verified. He says, the woman says, it was a Spanish lady, he, he told me, the woman says, everything's canceled. Lo and behold, he, before he walks away, he takes out his New Jersey State Medicaid card and he says, before I waste four tubes of blood, do you, does Quest Diagnostics by any chance take Medicaid? The girl abruptly said, no, no, we don't, we don't, we, I cannot accept your card. He says, are you sure you don't want to take a, uh, make a copy of my medic? Uh, well, your friend has been there before. Yes, I, the Medicaid paid for it. He says to, he says, are you sure you don't want to make a copy of my Medicaid card? She goes, no. Uh, he said to the woman, would you like to call the main office? in um, Cheaterboro to verify that you don't accept Medicaid because this is very strange. Are they still over here? Oh, sure. Oh, I didn't know they were still They're here. still there by the Cheaterboro Airport. Right. Yeah. Because usually a big outfit accepts state Medicaid. The girl says, no, nah, that's okay. I, you don't have to give me the card. I don't want to make a copy. She don't want to call. She don't want to make a copy. She don't want to she don't want to do nothing. So the person drives home, and an inner voice tells him to call the corporate office again, Quest Diagnostics, in uh, Teterboro, and speaks to the billing department. You know what the billing department said? Of course we take Medicaid. What's going on here? So... Did you tell her? So the, the, the person explains the Did whole you tell your friend to get back yes. to them and uh, they uh, he got on the phone with uh, why are you getting why are there different stories within the organization here I don't get this yes why is why is 
the the woman at the lab. People are turning away some people, then the higher ups are saying, "Yes, we do." So what's going on here? Well, he may he filed he filed the complaint. They're they're going to call him back. There, the office Good. manager is going to call him back Good. because they said this is not right. So is everything going to be all right with your buddy? Everything's going to be all right in terms of a disciplinary action of the woman who turned them down. Because nobody, he told me, nobody had a clue at the uh, at the lab. Nobody knew anything. How many other people, I wonder how she turned away, and they didn't know about this, and they just left. He says, well, do you have a list of acceptable insurance companies that Quest accepts? Oh, no, I don't know anything. She says, I don't know. I don't know. And she's sitting on her butt. She, she doesn't make a call. She doesn't, she, she's not interested in making a call. And this is who they're hiring. Yes. And, and, and the man had a big conversation with the billing department about competence nowadays in offices, not just uh, computer glitches in the system, but incompetent people. You're hiring people to turn people away because they don't know or they're Lazy. Younger generation, lazy. younger generation people being hired in the office you that go, don't care. You fill the application. I go. I I assume go for interviews. You want the job so bad. Once you get the job, you don't want to do the the job. Well, you know what the billing uh, 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 manager told him? They said there's a severe work ethic problem in America today with the younger generation people. Well, there's no work ethic. Well, there is. What else? I think it comes down with it. Each corporation, you're training and tell them certain things. This is our booklet. These things will not be tolerated. You do this, it's grounds for dismissal immediately. You will not do this, you will do this. If you don't like it, don't accept this job. But they're all clueless. They know nothing. Why, are, why aren't you clued in during training and orientation? Or if you're not sure, instead of turning a customer Let me down, check for you. make a call. Let me check. I don't know. Let me check, sir. I will. The person. He says the woman did not smile, did not apologize, did not say, I'm sorry, sir, for your inconvenience. You know, you fasted at the... Well, they're hiring the wrong people, number one, but how did she get hired in the first place? You're Everybody right about her supervisor. that. Yeah, he's, uh, he says, uh, I fasted at the 9 p.m. the day last night. I didn't eat anything. I wonder how many people are getting hurt by her turning them away. Yeah, just water, no breakfast, yeah. no lunch. Nothing. The guy goes there with an empty stomach, getting probably a low blood sugar crash from not eating, and takes the four vials of blood, and this person does not want to take the time to help to verify the information, to call the this corporate is just one company. This is one quest diagnostics. Like other companies around the world, yeah. this is happening in, with you. Quest Diagnostics Lab. Now, of course. Obamacare, there's always a catch to everything that sounds nice. There's always a catch. The catch is if you have Obamacare, you have an HMO, which means you have to stay in network. You get a booklet and you have this to. This is all confusing to me. I don't understand what that you means. Can't, you, can't, you cannot go to your doctor, he has to be in network. Why? You're right. Why? Why? All doctors in, that, in that network, as they say. Let's say you have a doctor. And how are they choosing X doctor and not Y doctor? Right. Let's say uh, somebody has an, uh, a senior citizen, an, an older mother, and she really likes her doctor, her specialist. So now she can't go to him. Now she can't go to her doctor. Is that fair? No, it's not. So what they're saying is bedside matter just really doesn't matter at all anymore. It sounds like only the bottom line matters to these, to these What is the bottom line? I wish someone would tell me. What is the bottom line? Nobody cares. It's like it's a, caring, lack of caring, money, lack of money. They want more greed. What is the bottom line here? I mean... I'd like to somebody come right out and say what will work, what won't work. I mean, Horizon, it's a famous company. Insurance, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, right? Blue Shield, now, yes. why would 
why wouldn't Quest Diagnostics and Horizon do business together if Horizon is a big company and Quest is a big Did company? Did you, for your friend, get the name of the lady who spoke to? All right, all right. File the complaint. And, and they and they have him continue to follow up. The corporate office apologized and felt bad for the individual. Everything's the, all right. Everything should be all right. A whole, a whole morning was wasted. Yeah. And I apologized to him. I said, look, I'm personally sorry that you had to waste the whole morning starving because you had to, you know, to get an accurate blood test, you should so really... So have to go back, your, your buddy? Now he's, no, he's got to find LabCorp. He's got to find uh, the nearest LabCorp. Why? If they do cover... Why? Why don't they say, you know... You know, maybe customer service. Make sense. Maybe the corporate. Or if, to to if they do cover the you know guys' insurance. Maybe the corporate office will contact him and say, "We apologize so much, sir, for what happened yeah, to you." This doesn't make sense. We still. They're saying we do cover this, but when they say, "Listen, your blood work now." Yeah, maybe they'll say we still have your your four tubes of blood. Yeah, so what's the problem here? And we need to give me your give me your Medicaid number. We're on the phone. We will do the blood test. If they were, if they were a good corporation, they will do that. Because if you take it, look, a person can't make up company policy themselves. Out of the oh, clear, out of clear, they can because they do. They use person. It's called. It sounds like office politics. That girl just did it today. The girl didn't like she his. She made it up herself. He, she didn't like his face for some reason. That's not for you to determine. She, she... That is not your choice. I don't know if it's because he, he was Caucasian and she was Latin. That should have nothing to do she with like no. it. She don't like no. his face. She don't like it. I mean, maybe she's got a problem with men. Who knows? We're not hiring you to pick and choose. Okay? So, really, that's not your job. All customers should be treated equally. That's right. Everybody has insurance or, or some form of insurance. But don't lie to people. Don't lie. You know? Don't say, oh, we don't accept your uh, yeah. New Jersey when you, state. When you do. Right. So, we don't accept your New, Jer New Jersey state Medicaid card. And then turn. Then corporate office says, yes, we do accept the New Jersey state Medicaid card. It's, it's bull. insane. It's bull. It's absolute bull. It happens every day, everywhere. There's so much incompetence. But it's, there's so many glitches in the system. There's it's so many. It's going to get worse, sadly. You know. I think. And when you know, when when politicians mention a social program, you know, they say, "Oh, oh we're 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 installing, we're um, we've created this social program to really help the poor with not having health care. They don't have health care, so we have compassion. Well, if you're going to make the people's life miserable and put up obstacles, for God's sake. Road bumps and adding more stress to people's lives. Yeah. It's now, not good. Now, what, what, what about the seniors that have to go through this? That's even more stress for them. It's, it'll get worse. Yeah. It will continue to get worse. Now, my friend that, that uh, busted his his rim and is shattered his uh, his tire by going over a massive pothole, uh, like you said, make sure he gets photographs of the pothole when he submits the claim to the state of New Jersey. Well, and what you said too, the cop was there. See, so yeah, the cops report, he was right there for a yeah. reason because that pothole blew my tire. Yeah. I'm here, that's why I'm on the side of the road. The cops report the whole bit. Take a yeah. photo though, which I don't understand why they want a photo. You could take a photo of any pothole and right. a lot look alike. Yeah, it's, so really that, that's the least of his worries. Yeah, it's Highway 109 in Jersey oh, City. So it's uh, Highway yeah, 109. Don't let them get away with it. Well, no, because and because they don't want to fix, they don't want to fill the pothole until spring. Now, how many more cars are going to get damaged? Until spring. Until the middle of the spring. They, they, they refuse to fill the crater, which was a huge pothole, until spring. Spring. So that means how many more people are going to get damaged to their car? And you pay for it. You see how? There goes your budget.
logic. You see how the, the logic Your mentality of doesn't make sense. Politics is, is business as usual. Politics has a lot of stupidity. I think the majority of politics is stupidity. Um, it just doesn't make sense. As you know, when I went through a football when I moved up here from, from Texas, it just doesn't make sense. Logic would dictate the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your 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 mechanic had your car for, for over a month before he actually fixed it. We started with it into the sixth week. So it was five weeks in about two or three days. That's what it was. Well, what he told you, it sounded like he was going <clears> to <throat> get right to it. It was his idea. I called him on a Thursday, five, five and a half weeks earlier. I got the financing to fix the car. I said, Tom, I'll bring the car. This is a Thursday. I'm going to have the car flat better in on Monday, buddy. He was, why not tomorrow? I said, oh, you want to get it tomorrow? He said, sure. So we did it then. So we did it then. I waited five and a half weeks. Why? Right. Why? It's right. <laughs> I, my idea was Monday. He said, let's do it tomorrow. I said, great. So I rushed it in there. He rushed a flatbed down. Uh, and nothing happened for five and a half weeks. You know what I also I don't understand? I heard something ridiculous on the news today. Supposedly, uh, a man and a woman who both have life sentences for murder, murder one and murder two in prison, want to get married. And they, they, nobody wants to marry them. Why on earth, what kind of a married life do they think they would have with a life, life sentence in prison? Are, are you allowed in prison to conjugate? I don't know how this works. Con uh, consummate? Yeah, conjugate. Conjugate. Conju I mean, here. Yeah, consummate. Consummate. But what's the... That's right. No, the, the two people are in jail for murder. Why get, why get married? Because they're stupid. Even if they weren't in prison, why get married? So they're talking, right. they're talking all day to lose people. They get married? No. No, how, a man and woman. It's just people in prison. Why are they getting married? They're both in jail for life. Why did I say conjugate? That was stupid. I don't know they think of it. That's all right. Consummate. I'm sorry. Consummate. Isn't that the same as a soup? Campbell's soup? Yeah. Consummate. Consummate. Yeah. Consumé. Yeah, Consumé. Is there a cream of dandelion, by the way? Somewhere there's got to be. They eat bugs. You know? There's got to be somewhere. Cream of dead. No. You know, in the in the Asian market, there's so many greens that I never knew existed. Green vegetables of all different kinds. A tremendous amount. Not just bok choy or uh, many. You want you want to you want to be on the worldwide uh, internet? You want to do a talk show? You don't want to? Okay. You could. You want to? You, you'll be on my show. Yeah. Go over and talk. Go over. I'll, I'll go over there. Go over. Go over. I talk about uh, stuff. Go. Okay, what's your first name, sir? Joseph. Oh, no, I, I'm busy today. So I'm oh, you're busy today. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to... Teach him good things. Come on now. Teach him good stuff. Yeah. I wasn't going to sit here all day and talk, you know. Was, but anyway, you, have your lunch next time. We'll talk about the um, healthcare system, how it uh, is more honest in Asia, more more honest system. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure any, any country's system is that good. Well, it's prevent, prevent, prevention. No, it's going to be on the internet talk radio. Internet. There's no censorship with with my show. There's no censorship, so you can say anything you want. But on on CB on CBS you can't. Yeah, look at this poor guy over here. I don't think he wants to be on the video. That's my friend. He's maybe he's shy. That's my friend. But whatever you want to talk, talk about he next wife, time. He and his wife have just made up. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, so I love so you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sir William, would you like to do any impersonations before we say goodbye? No, I'll just say goodbye for now. You want to say goodbye for now? I will say goodbye for now. Thank Take you. care, everyone. Till next time, America. Bye bye. I was waiting for the bye bye. Oh. Okay. This has been a Megalife 21 production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another, another argument, argument with the conservative. conservative. Right-wing right Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted, quoted scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost, lost because you came at him with facts. facts. Nothing, Nothing but facts. facts. And you and expected you that that would uh, that, that would make you look good. good. That, that would, would make you win the argument, argument but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? Argument. You, know you know why you're going to you're lose, lose your next, next argument? argument? Because you don't, you don't read censored. Censored, censored a 30-year-old newsletter, newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. conservative. Read, read censored, censored, and you'll, and you'll have, have all the ammunition, ammunition you need. need. Every, Every time, time you get, you get into, into an argument, argument with a right-wing right conservative, conservative uh, so-called, so-called Christian. Christian. Censored. censored. That's, That's all you need. Read it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, And with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest-hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises, then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument, the right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored. That's all you need. Read it. And defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, 
politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Okay, we're back. We are back from uh, our voiceover artist, William H. Moro the third. Thank you very much, uh, Billy Moro, for uh, having an outstanding show with me. And uh, now you know the whole story, listeners and viewers, about the excuse me, the ordeal that that gentleman had with the healthcare system, you know, um, Quest Diagnostics Laboratory, uh, uh, Horizon of New Jersey, HMOs suck. You know, it's so much easier when you, you can go to your doctor and the fact that uh, uh, Quest Diagnostics Lab only deals with... Uh, um, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Horizon of New Jersey only deals with LabCorp and not a big company like Quest. But, but anyway, <laughs> the big runaround was because the gentleman could not get a human being on the phone. <laughs> Quest Diagnostics could not get them on the phone. Just, just, just kept on getting an automated uh, voice to ask somebody if his insurance will pay for a complete blood test and because he could not get a human being on the phone he went there he got the run around we got the run around and wasted four tubes of blood the uh, vampires had starving it. from fasting you know mm -hmm. it's it usually sucks. when they make you fast like, like that you it's done early in the morning but yeah. you were until after lunch, you're right. You were waiting, and 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 they, and they used and the uh, terminology used. Uh, he, from what he told me, the terminology in the automated voice was not simple and straightforward. You know, they use other terms, so the average person would not know what to press, what button on the phone to press. It was like very confusing was not user friendly at all and uh but anyway uh great show William Morrow and uh of course you heard our commercial of promo now we return with uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman and the rest of our show let us go back to the readings yeah let us get a little lighter here for a, a little moment. lighter so this is a dear Abby. Isn't she dead? No, this is a new one. Abigail Van Buren? You She's mean dead. another Abby? She's dead, but this one took her place. She's also Abby? Yeah. What is it? They're going to be Abbeys uh, until the 22nd century? Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is her name Abigail? I have no idea what her name is. It's just dear Abby. That's the column name. Can you be sexually harassed or abused by your spouse? Uh, 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 d difficult subject. Difficult, like, um, very difficult subject to answer. Uh, My husband talks dirty to me. No. 
If you can't and talk, grabs at my tits. Well, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't get, uh, if you can't do it in a nasty way, you were your significant other. Who, who else could you do it with? I have repeatedly asked him to stop. But he doesn't listen and continues to do it. So here so she's not providing the her conjugal duties as a spouse. He's not getting it. He's not getting it, if you know what I mean. We have two small kids at home. Here we go. I know what this is about now. And by the time they go to bed, I couldn't care less about being intimate. Oh, gosh. His behavior disgusts me. And to be honest, I don't want to have sex with him. To be honest, how did she behave when they dated and before she gave birth? I have female problems. Yeah. And I told him it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah. But it makes no difference he, to him. He's going to cheat on her. He touches me in front of the kids. Everything's about the kids. Once a woman gives birth, everything's about the kids. The man is no longer at the top of the list. He, he always plays second fiddle to the children. Always. And I have to slap his hand away. She doesn't like a wife, really. I can't leave him because I don't have a car or my own income. It's like this is this is getting comical now. Nor do I have a family or friends close by. I can't go to his family because they see him in a different light. What the hell good is she as a wife? He might as well he, he might as well be single. What would you suggest? And is it harassment? And could I press charges? You hear that? You hear that heavy metal music? The guy turned up the volume. Here's Lear Abbey's. What was her? Answer. What's her answer about this? You have mentioned so many problems in your short letter that it's hard to know where to begin. While your husband's attempts at foreplay are being Beyond clumsy and ineffective, I can't help but feel some sympathy for him, because it appears you have him on a starvation diet. I agree. How long this can continue for either of you is uncertain. Rather than try to charge harassment, why not schedule an appointment with your gynecologist and find out why having sex is painful for you. Smart. Very smart. It's not supposed to be. And your doctor may be able to help you resolve the problem. Marriage counseling might also help because it's clear you and your husband are not communicating on any meaningful level. Very confident. <clears throat> Excuse me, very common problem with couples, lack of communication. Very common problem. Uh, if you can't communicate, then you, what's left? You got. You have to be you a psychic. You can't psych communicate, you can't bake a cake. You got to be a psychic uh, mind reader, you have to be the amazing Kreskin or something. I mean, you know, you, you have to communicate. See, uh, this woman is the reason why this marriage uh, probably won't last. First of all, children today have to know who the alpha is and, and they have to know that they have to know that they're not their parents equal. She's 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 putting her life too much focus on the children and the children are being coddled and spoiled and getting too much attention. She has to prioritize her husband. I don't care what anybody says. The kids are just, they're people, just like the adults. They're just 
just little people. They have to learn that the universe and, and 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 mommy and daddy you know i mean the universe does not revolve around them and they have to learn the word no and uh i think the this couple should make it appointments uh to be intimate intimacy appointments and the kids have to sh shut the hell up and stay in their room and keep quiet and not bang on the door bothering mommy and daddy when they're doing the uh, horizontal uh, lombada or mambo or whatever, you know, I mean. When they have the do not disturb sign old on the door. Old fashioned discipline, man. The kids have to know their place. You got my, you busting mommy's, uh, 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 you, aggra you aggravate your mother all day, have her run around for you, and when nighttime comes, when dinner's over, and their homework is done and dinner's over that's it the night belongs to mommy and daddy and you have to enforce it very strictly oh, the night that's uh, uh dear james's article my column if these problems are not resolvable you can't continue living like this and neither can he because your family isn't nearby and you have no transportation, call or write them and let them know you may need their help to return. If they are una unable to help you, contact a domestic abuse hotline. Unwanted sexual advances could be considered har harassment. And sex without consent is rape. Well, she's trying to, she is rejecting her husband's seduction. You know, because he hasn't, it doesn't sound like he forced anything upon her. It just sounds like he's trying to get something going. And she's rejecting her own husband. And she talks about him in a very vile way which is not normal you know if your husband is uh, trying to uh, get something going and he's trying to seduce you and you're his wife and you talk to him like he's, he's like a disgusting stranger doing this to you something's wrong here yeah. uh, dear Abby it absolutely frosts me when parents Head for the toy department so their children will have something to play with while they shut up. It doesn't belong to them. Unless you buy it, it doesn't belong to your kid. Then, after the kids have spent time drooling, teething, and sneezing, they leave the dirty toys at the end of the aisle for someone else to buy. Yesterday, I saw a child sucking on the paw of a stuffed animal. When I commented on how that must be the child's favorite toy, the mother said it wasn't theirs. She was just keeping the little boy quiet while she shopped. Last week, I stood behind someone in the checkout line. In her child's mouth was a ribbon from a balloon. When the mother finished loading her groceries onto the conveyor belt, she said, Time to put this back now! It's my pet peeve. First the germs that they get from sucking on this stuff. Then the ones everyone else is exposed to from the child. And on, on top of that, they're stealing. Because I have seen the children break the toys. This is wrong. And we're all paying for it. True. Why can't these parents throw something in a goddamn diaper bag before they leave home? Because, um... Many people have taken the uh, 
the slogan uh, uh, that the customers is always right a little too seriously, and they feel that uh, you know they they're disrespecting. Even though they're they're a customer, they're still on somebody else's property, and they they uh, the items in the store do not belong to them unless they purchase it. Bingo. And they are uh, just, just being very. very uh, Selfish. Selfish, inconsiderate with other people's property and, and other people's uh, pro belongings. They could, the toys do not belong to them unless they buy it. Just like this guy turning up the volume of his uh, heavy metal is also inconsiderate and selfish. So, unless you buy the toy, purchase it, it ain't yours. it's not your kid's right to play with it. And uh, by the way, um, retail stores internationally, they, as a rule of thumb, they immediately approach the parents and tell their, tell the parents to cease and desist with what they're doing. Uh, and you know, unless you're ready to buy it, unless you buy it, you can't. A lot of times they don't because they're afraid of. Uh, of 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 aggravating the customer. Don't they charge people with uh, um, shoplifting if somebody? If they go out of the store. If somebody, but it's not it's not yours to uh, play with. To play with because if they play with it, they might break it. They might damage it. And how on earth? Well, aren't they damaging? Are sucking on it? Well, then that's like a health health code violation it's like a, a cross contamination yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean come on it's it's it doesn't belong it, look it's not my problem if i'm a store owner it's not my problem you have kids and you're on my property and your kid is getting saliva and sucking on my toy <laughs> and possibly and throwing it around and dropping it on the floor repeatedly and it's my toy because you haven't bought it yet so either you refrain from doing this or you'll have to leave the store <laughs> that's it plain and simple the customer is not always right even uh, uh, less gold on uh, hardcore porn on true TV said that the, the, the fact is the customer is not always right Dear Abby's answer, because the parents aren't doing their job. There you go. They are forgetful or lazy. Lazy. And have no consideration for store owners. That too. Or other shoppers. Sadly, parents like the ones you have described raise children who are just like themselves. Yeah, they grow up to be scumbags, just like the parents. A lot of these uh, uh, younger generation, like, like yuppie parents, are that way. These are the same people. Well, not just yuppies, but younger generation parents. I've been. I used to go to this buffet uh, in nearby called Bond Buffet. Wow. I believe it's Maywood, New Jersey. And I stopped going to the Bond Buffet simply because parents. Uh, younger parents allow their children to ransack the place, running back and forth, back and forth, screaming, taking tantrums, crying, whatever, and the parents are just laughing it, laughing it off, and just continuing with their conversation as their children bothers everyone else. So I stopped going there, and yes, the, it's it's run by. Asian people and Asian people will eventually tell you you gotta you gotta control your kid you gotta stop this you know but the point is it's not my problem that these people have children that are bratty or even if you have a child that's well behaved it's not my problem all I know is I'm in that buffet to enjoy my meal and I should not be subject to your monster kids. Mm -hmm. That's it.
A congressman who sends an X-rated photo of himself oh, jeopardizes his reputation and his job. Is that Brother Wiener? Anthony Wiener? But in many states, teens caught doing the same thing can risk felony charges. And why is it a felony? Jail time and being branded sexual offenders. What if uh, it's uh, a girl that you um, that likes you, that you are dating or wants to date you, and what if she requests a, a naked photo, which is stupid to send anybody a naked photo, showing your face and everything? It's, it's absolutely nuts because it could bite. It, it'll come back to bite you on the ass. But uh, why is it a felony? That's because a minor who transmits a sexually explicit oh, photo of themselves, gotcha. according to many state laws, is manufacturing and distributing child pornography. Even if it's between another minor? That's correct. But they're two minors. That's correct. And minors cannot do that. But they're both minors. It's only child pornography if an, if an adult is involved. That's not part of the law. Well, that law is, is, does, is not logical. The law covers minors. I think it's more... And not the coal miners. I think it's a, um, more of a uh, right-wing fundamentalist religious law. Well, they're behind these things. Because it's not logical. Two pe people are minors. Let's say they're 15 years old apiece. And let's say one request, one sends the other a nudie picture through the cell phone. And the other one sends it back. These kids committed a felony even though they're both minors. Child pornography. It's child pornography. It's it, the charge of child pornography is when an adult is involved. No? It has nothing to do with that. In other words, they're too young to be sending. You're not supposed to send any pictures of minors. It's child I'm not sending anything. They're sending it. The minor is sending it. It's child pornography. If it involves a sense. minor, it is child pornography. Even if the bo both people are minors? That has nothing to do with it. It has a lot to do with it. Yeah, you're just thinking that. Because it's not part of the law. But the law covers minors. Period. Not two minors or three minors or an orgy of minors doesn't make it right. They are minors. And I thought child pornography involved money too. A bit. Uh, uh, hey, it would wouldn't be there if the money was not involved. I mean, um, uh, 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 doing it as a business, like, you know, prostitution is illegal because, you know, money changes hands. Yeah, well, that's part of it. I mean, how do you think these uh, 100,000 or so kids disappear every year and get involved in sex trafficking? Okay. And and force the right. prostitution so what and all this other crap. So what you're saying is sending the nudie picture as a minor is illegal, but it, it, what Anthony Weiner did is okay because he's an adult. That's correct. Okay, gotcha. Lawmakers across the country, however, now say the problem of teen sexting. <laughs> didn't exist when they enacted harsh punishments for child porn and are considering changes that would ensure minors don't face jail time for youthful mistakes. <laughs> Let's just call this what it is. Stupid! It's like, it's like putting somebody from possession of marijuana Want in jail. It's also stupid, said Rhode Island State Representative Peter Martin, a Democrat from Newport, who is sponsoring a bill 
to downgrade teen sexting from a felony to a juvenile offense. They should be. They're juveniles, aren't they? These are kids we're talking about. I don't think minors should face these severe punishments just for being stupid. Hey, it's just like that really pretty blonde, uh, tall blonde, uh, uh, very attractive teacher who went to prison in Florida for having an affair with, with kid, uh, yeah. one of the teenage boys in her class. And, and she was very attractive, very attractive. And she was arrested. Let me tell you something. You're, you're not, hold on. You're not corrupting. A teenage boy cannot be corrupted by being seduced by a very attractive teacher. You're, she is doing the boy a favor. I wish I was was seduced when I was in high school by a hot-looking teacher. Anybody ever seen Mrs. Robinson? And they, they arrested her, doing time. She was pretty. Yes, I, I know about that. Thing. I know about that. Movie, sure. Legislators in Rhode Island and 20 other states have considered bills to adjust penalties for teen sexting. Florida lawmakers voted to punish teen sexting with a $60 fine and community service. Community service? Lawmakers in New York, where Representative Anthony, Anthony Weiner, Brother Weiner, is embroiled in a sexting scandal, have introduced legislation that would allow judges to send teens who send explicit photos to counseling instead of jail. Studies show that one in five teens has electronically transmitted explicit photos of him or herself. So if you're in counseling and all the teens drop their drawers in front of the, uh, the, the social worker that means they get more community service? They get, they get extra? And one third say they have received such photos. Yeah, one third. It's a 21st century update of I'll show you mine. If you show me yours. With one critical difference. Lewd photos can be passed on with the push of a button. Yes. And live yes. forever on the internet. Oh yeah, once something is on the internet, unless somebody eliminates it, totally deletes it from their hard drive. How are you gonna do that? Other people have it. Oh yeah, yeah, if you send, if you circulate it, and That's you correct. send it, it's out there forever. Forever! It's an extraordinarily common behavior among kids, like it or not. But they got the raging hormones flowing very, very rapidly. I hope lawmakers and prosecutors figure out quickly how to address it, because it's not going away. Parents and educators are the most likely to discover that a teen has sent or received lewd photos. Even when police or prosecutors get involved, most cases don't result in felony charges. But it has happened. Six Pennsylvania teens faced felony child pornography charges the police found underage boys swapping nude fake pictures of female classmates. That's a problem. When the whole town has a copy of the, the classmate naked with her face showing. And that's a big problem. The town pumped. They become
become the town uh, whore, the town slut. And everybody knows what you look like naked in, in the entire school. And they all make comments as you walk by. The case ended up in juvenile court. The girl from Ipanema. Where the kings uh, were sentenced to community service. Technology gets people in more trouble sometimes. <laughs> Got any any more balloon boy or, or, or Republican Congress no, articles there? We are going to clear the air here. Be calm. Air purifier. For a little while. How often and how well do you remember your dreams? Sometimes I remember, and most of the time I don't. Some people seem to be super dreamers, able to recall effortlessly their dreams in vivid detail. My mother's almost every day. My mother is that way. I think the dreams you vividly remember are messages, either from your from who? either from your subconscious, or or. Um, from the, the astral world. Dreams can be messages as they were for Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel had to interpret the omens from the Bible. You know, uh, 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 yeah, they, they, there's meaning to a dream, whether it's personal, psychological meaning, or Sigmund Freud wrote a book on that. Yeah. Well, uh, there's also meanings to dreams based on the occult. Others struggle to remember even a vague fragment or two. What about dreaming in black and white versus color? Well, you may you didn't get it colored TV. A new study has discovered that heightened blood flow activity within certain regions of the brain could help explain the great dreamer divide. In general, dream recall is thought to require some amount of wakefulness during the night for the vision to be encoded in longer term memory. But it is not known what causes some people to wake up more than others. A team of French researchers looked at brain activation maps of sleeping subjects and honed in on areas that could be responsible for nighttime awakenings. When comparing two groups of dreamers on the opposite ends of the recall spectrum, the maps revealed that the temporal parietal junction, an area responsible for collecting and processing information from the external world was more highly activated in high dream recallers. The researchers speculate that this allows these people to sense environmental noises in the night and wake up momentarily and in the process store dream memories Support of this hypothesis. Previous medical cases have found that when these portions of the brain are damaged by a stroke, patients lose the ability to remember their dreams. Even 
though they can still achieve rapid eye movement. Stage of sleep. In which rapid dreaming eye. such a thing as usually a occurs. Sleeping brain Boing. cannot store new information into long term memory. If, pre if presented with new vocabulary words to learn while asleep, you will wake up completely unaware of what you heard. So what does that mean to all those that they you can learn in your sleep? The, the, yeah, the, the, did that ever really work? It just said it doesn't. It doesn't? Like so it was a gimmick? Yeah. You think? Scam. Scam. A dirty scam. You, you think the, uh, the Evelyn Wood speed reading was also a gimmick? A scam? Yes. Or partial? The partially? Evelyn speed reading course. One thing. They condense what you read. Summarize it, right? It is like, uh, what's that? Uh, Reader's Digest. What they do to a story. They condense it. They leave out portions. That's what Evelyn Wood and the other speed reading courses do. So you're supposed to, uh, you get a mental image. You don't read every word. So you don't read the, uh, the, the, the T-H-G, uh, you know, like you leave out, yeah, you leave out certain, you, things. certain words and, uh, you're scanning, you're scanning. Scanning. And you yeah. pick up from your scanning. In other words, you're not reading every word from top to bottom. Oh, uh, okay. Okay? So, what happens then is you are not taking in the whole page. No, you're not. Even though you think you are. You well, are condensing. Isn't it? Isn't uh, isn't leaving out a decimal point in in uh, mathematics uh, uh, extremely um, detrimental well, sure to the would. accuracy of, of an I'm equation? I'm sure if you're doing mathematics, you would not be doing Evelyn Wood reading. No. Well, okay. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, leaving out many words of a story would not if uh, affect the uh, I mean, Evelyn Wood is for a person who's going to read an 800 page book. Now, I've been on the net with people who tell me they read a book in a day. Now, I devote a lot more time than your average person reading, and I do not read a book in a day. I can only read a chapter or two because then I get bored. Jeez. I get distracted. I get bored. I think I and assimilation to me is better if I do a chapter per per day. If the sleeping brain is not able to memorize something, perhaps the brain has to awaken to encode dreams in memory. If awakened during a dream, the brain has the chance to transfer its faint flashes via reiteration of the memory in one's mind into more long-term storage. This hypothesis has been dubbed the arousal retrieval model. There's a real question about the difference between dreams.
dreaming, encoding memories of those dreams, and being able to recall them. Dreams exist first in working memory, or the memory we use to hold and manipulate thought fragments. Dreams are very fragile in short-term memory. People do seem to form many short-term memories of dreams, which most nights, for most people, are lost. In a previous experiment, Ruby and her colleagues tested the arousal retrieval model by measuring the sleep and wake cycles of a group of high and low recall dreamers using electrocephography, or EEG, they found that the high recall group had twice as much awake time throughout the night as compared with the low recallers. Also, they found that the brains of high recallers responded more strongly to auditory Upon seeing these distinctions between the two kinds of dreamers, Ruby wanted to determine exactly which regions of the brain were having differently, behaving differently, excuse me. Using positron emission tomography, or PET, blood flow maps. They compared 21 male super dreamers who consistently remember their dreams roughly five days a week with 20 low recall males. Tommy Dreamer, the wrestler, pro wrestler. Who could remember something only about two mornings per month. <coughs> they saw higher activation in the temporal parietal, parietal junction in high recallers, both during REM sleep and wakefulness. Which could mean that these people are more reactive to sounds or movements in the night and briefly awaken. Another part of the brain that showed higher activation in high recall individuals is the medial prefrontal frontal cortex. Sound like a coconut. Which has been found to be involved in self-referential thinking. <laughs> to whack your forehead, it sounds just like a coconut. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, it's over? It's over. Oh, God. Now we know I was why dozing I off. <laughs> Now we know. It was a very interesting uh, thing. And now yes, we're going to get was. even more interesting. It was. It was. No charges are expected in the death of a snake handling pastor. Oh, gosh. In Kentucky. I figures whose family refused medical care after he had been bitten by a rattlesnake. Are those the pastors that dance around in, in the church? They're like Baptist uh, ministers, and they're, and they're taking up serpents. They're, they're holding the rattlesnake as they're, they're, doing, they're boogieing and, you know, doing a moonwalk or whatever the hell they do in church. Ooh, take it up serpents. Ooh. And they, they feel that God is going to. Uh, they have faith. Is going to make uh, neutralize the poison if they get bit. They're not supposed to get any poison if they get bit. Unfortunately, oh, really? these people don't understand. God did not say that to the vast majority of humankind. 
it is only for the elect. Serpents. It's, yeah. Only yeah, right. for the elect. Well, people have died from this uh, cult. This because they practice. don't get it. They believe they'll be raptured. They're born again. Unfortunately, these things are not in the Bible. And they are not addressed to them. So it doesn't matter how much faith they have. They're going to be bitten by the rattlesnake. And um, this is why I do not follow or uh, promote or believe in organized religion. And uh, because people have gotten away from what is exactly in the Bible and made up their own rules and laws. Well, the problem, yeah, but the problem is that they haven't gotten away from it. They don't know it's there. And they are prevented from knowing it's there. Why are they pre prevented from knowing if they're adults? Because God is not saving everyone now. If they're adults with a, a brain with a human brain, can't they make decisions, rational ones, rational decisions, and use logic to say, gee, they could read the same prophecy or statement. Yeah. Let's say it's a prophecy, and it's a future prophecy, and it involves descendants of ancient Israel. Right. Well, to understand that prophecy, you would have to know who are the descendants of ancient Israel. How many people know that? Hey. Do Jews exist today? Yes. Well, if Jews exist today, then obviously the other ten tribes exist somewhere, somewhere. today. In other words, it's like when Harold Camping said that when he was alive, uh, anytime the Bible mentioned the word fig leaf, it represented Israel. Now, how, how did he know that? How does, how does the fig leaf become Israel? You know? Well, the trouble is that the, one of the problems is that you can find out these things, but they're not going going to do it because they are prevented from doing it. They don't God is not interested in them now. People don't do They not. don't understand that. People do not prove all things. But they can't prove it. They don't look it up. They can't prove it. They are prevented they from won't, doing so. They won't look it up and study it and prove it. They Even won't. if they did, they wouldn't understand it. Okay. Okay? They are prevented from doing it. God is not interested in them now. So they, they choose their favorite evangelist and their favorite pastor and they sit there once or twice a week and they listen to it and they enjoy it and they go, oh, he's my favorite. Oh, I love that uh, Joel Osteen guy. Oh, what a, what a wonderful, positive, smiling he makes face. He's always smiling. About being rich. Joe Olstein. He says it's God. God has done it. God has made me rich, so I don't have to be I don't have to worry. But anymore. you do you know these okay. these uh two women uh um that were very impressed by, by his smiling face. One of them was uh, a, a woman I used to date and the other mm. one the other one was my mother. Um, when you say date, you're like, you're all shocked, like you're an Amish person or something. <laughs> anyway, they, they thought, oh, what a, what a, what a powerful sermon he gave you. Oh, that, what a positive guy. He's always smiling. See, what they, what won them over was a man, uh, a nicely, a very nicely dressed, uh, 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 Fairly attractive man who doesn't stop smiling. It was that 
It, it was the way he presented his sermon that won them over, not the contents of his sermon. That's what I noticed about their opinion of Joel Osteen. And I'm sure everybody else says that about their favorite evangelist. Yeah. Oh, I love that Benny Hinn. Oh, I love that uh, that uh, Pat Robertson. Elmer Gantry. Right, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Okay, but that's the but the the, the problem is there's like over I don't know two thousand denominations or stuff calling themselves Christians. Yeah. They want to be entertained. These people. A Christian is one who follows Jesus. They don't follow Jesus, so they aren't Christians. Oh, look, an evangelist. This is not, not supposed to be there to entertain you. He's oh, not, he's not there to like. entertain you. He's there to tell you not what you want to hear, but he's there to tell you what the Word of God is, whether you like it or not. That's it. Period. Yeah, but, but you see, the, see, the thing of it is, for you to understand this stuff, you have to be called. Mm -hmm. And God is not calling them. But that's what they don't understand because they believe in a saving for all and that there's a battle going on between the devil and God. And God has to get all, all these people saved so that the devil don't get them. Well, you know, if that's what's going on, God is losing the battle. And that ain't what's going on. Well, like you said, it, it, it was meant to be that uh, only 144,000 is supposed to be saved initially. Because they're, they're the elect. Now. They will be the rulers with Jesus. Right. He's helpers here on earth that which, he's going to need which means, in the millennium. Which means that the balance of the population will probably perish in the tribulation, which uh, includes. Be, uh, I think there'll be one third left, something like that. Yeah, which, which, which. The point will, is, everybody that lives and dies will have their chance, but it ain't now. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, born again evangelicals say they, they, they don't want to suffer and deal with, with the tribulation. They want to be rescued. Oh, well, they ain't going to be. Okay. Only a small fraction will be saved. That is taken away from the problems of the tribulation. Now, do you see the As vast... They once were. The vast variety of important topics that are covered in progressive discussions. It's just... Middlesboro Police Chief Jeff Sharp said no charges would be filed in the death of Pastor Jamie Coots, 42, oh, really? co-star on the National Geographic television reality show Snake Salvation! Snake Salvation! Taking up serpents! Ooh. So he was 42 years old when he died of the rattlesnake bite. I wonder if it was on TV. Now, are they still performing this uh, yes. ritual? It will not break their faith. Uh, but he, they he's, said. Not, he's not the only one to die of this. No, he isn't. And everybody else that is not a true Christian will die of it. And Pure they, and simple. And it doesn't matter how much faith they have. They're still doing They're still doing it. Isn't it normal for the human brain to learn from their mistakes? Uh, no. Uh, or is know, it only animals that learn? New Age. New Age people old kids and etc. You know what they like to they got they like to they go and they walk on hot coals to prove themselves. 
so. They do a lot of things. Okay. Crazy. Kids do exactly. a lot of dangerous Well, so do these people. They, they have something called, uh, I think it's called subway subway car surfing. They do surfing. The they do surfing the with the buildings. They, they, you know, all this crap. They think they're invincible. I mean. Sharp said that Coots, the pastor of Full Gospel Tabernacle, in Jesus' name in Middlesbrough, was bitten at the church and passed out there. Emergency workers went to the church and to Coots' home but his family members would not allow medical assistance. Oh, talk about fanaticism. Religious nuts. They won't allow paramedics in the house to see him, right? Well, God was supposed to heal him. Oh, gosh. Coots was a legendary figure among a small group of serpent handling Pentecostals who believe the Holy Spirit can protect them from harm while they handle venomous snakes. Some say if they die, it's God's will. They ain't got the Holy Spirit. So the faith does not matter. So, the same thing, according to their logic, if you have the Holy Spirit, you know, according to their logic, and you uh, jaywalk in, in front of a, a uh, tractor trailer going 60 miles an hour, uh, uh, you are supposed to be spared by getting hit. If you were one of those called by God for a duty, and had the Holy Spirit, then no harm would come to you. Like Jeremiah from the Bible, or, or a couple others who were for John the Baptist, predestined. They had a job to do, so nothing was going to happen to them. Oh. Even Jesus, when he was battling the devil in the desert, yeah. the devil it? told him, hey, jump down! Down here, you know the angels will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, nah, yeah, you won't even hurt your toe. Come on, if you're the son of God, let me see you do it. Didn't, uh, didn't God uh, get angry with Jeremiah and turn him into a bullfrog? Who's that? Three dog night. Who sang "Joy to the World"? Jeremiah was a bullfrog, was a good friend of mine. Services at the church began with a warning. There's death in that box. Referring to wooden boxes that serpent handlers In 2008, Coots was arrested after Kentucky police found dozens of poisonous steaks at his home. Last year, Coots was arrested near Knoxville, Tennessee, after state troopers found snakes in his car. He pleaded guilty to violating Tennessee's ban on possessing venomous wildlife and received a year's probation. Pastor Andrew Hamlin, Coots's television co-star, was reportedly with Coots when he died. Oh, he had a TV show? Snake salvation! Holy shit. 
Only Holy snake! Only in Kentucky. Yay! He should have. He uh, should have drank a bottle of that uh, good Kentucky bourbon. Maybe you know. Maybe that would have counteracted the poison. You? Jack Daniels. No, uh, that's Sour Mash from Tennessee. Kentucky's uh, famous for most, of the, most of the bourbons. Bourbon. It's, corn, it's corn whiskey. You know, uh, uh, um. So then it's GMO? Yikes. They might, <laughs> they might, might be using GMO corn. <laughs> I wonder if. That's not good. That's not good. You think most of the corn products you see in supermarkets are GMO corn? Absolutely. And like corn flour, corn meal. What do our piggies eat? Piggies? I, I'm sure it's not the good organic non-GMO grains. I can tell you that. Kern. Slap. Kern. Well, in in Nevada, you know the uh, all the uh, buffets in the in the hotel casinos in, in Las Vegas, when the food gets a little mushy, instead of giving it to the soup kitchens and for the homeless, they sell it to the pig farmers in Nevada, and they slop the hogs with that. Oh, heaven forbid they should do something nice with that food. That doesn't involve making a, a, a profit. Heaven forbid it would be nice. <laughs> if people in the United States, the richest country in the world, would not have to worry about getting food. Strange that there are people going to bed hungry in 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 the, uh, the the number one first world country. Yeah. Isn't it very strange? And we always had money for a new tank or a battleship. What about all those planes? Airplanes. What about all those planes that caught? Uh, how many millions each that are sitting on an airfield that were never used, but they have to cut food stamps. There you go. They they bitch and moan about a few crumbs for the poor. Now that is a character problem, isn't it? But not bitch and moan about millions. What am what millions? Maybe even billions wasted in the military. Hey. They accuse Obama of. Not not wanting a strong military. I well, told you the other day, well, the, the Pentagon has lost six trillion dollars. They can't account for it. They misplaced it. No, they didn't misplace it. They just don't they want to. They went to the contractors. Okay? But their auditing is crap because it's corrupt. Believe me. There are massive amounts of weapons that were never used that are just complete, complete waste of taxpayers' money that cost millions of pieces. And the little crumbs that poor people get in the form of welfare and food stamps is a big deal to the Republicans. They are the most vile, despicable, human beings in this modern 21st century it is the Republican Party. And it you came to call them human. And, and I wouldn't call them human. Actually, it's a disgrace. And you, you people, you Americans sh should be ashamed of yourselves. The ones that believe their lies and vote Republican. You can call yourself anything you want. Tea Party, I don't care. Pick any name you want, but you sh should really be ashamed of yourself to vote for them. My brother said on Facebook last night that I didn't know the truth. 
Why is Fox telling the truth? Why does he assume Fox is telling the truth? Well, all I said was that, yeah, I agreed with he, what he said. He had some sort of uh, banner up there or something. How do you justify it? So, yeah, the uh, rich and corporations are the ones who feel entitled. Right. But he, he had it the other way. You know who he, he felt had it entitled. The poor. The poor. Yeah. So that's all I said. What about and then he said, well, I didn't know the truth. What about corporate welfare? He doesn't believe that exists? I have no idea, but obviously uh, the truth is about the poor, not the corporations and the rich. Keep on blaming the poor. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know the truth. See, I can't you got of that. Well, neither can anybody else. It's insane. But the Republicans can. And they do very well. It's sociopathic behavior. It's insanity. When they can't convince the other people, they do what Romney said. Mitt Romney. There's 47% of the people in the United States who will not vote for me. They consider themselves victims. They depend on government, etc., etc., etc. So they are, they they are victims. They write us off. They're victims of the rich. Yeah. The, the class warfare is very real. That's what I tried to tell my brother. Don't they know that. I said, you've been being screwed for decades by the corporations of the rich. It's deliberate. And I didn't know the truth. It's deliberate. Of what I was speaking. It's deliberately rich. And here's a, here's a guy, your brother, Robert Eisen, right? Robert, right? Here's a, here's a man who has received newsletter censored for, for probably decades. for decades. Well, it started in 1977. That's great. And still is a uh, has right wing tendency. Still is very. Sensation. He still is very right wing. Correct. So the newsletters didn't do any good. Obviously. Because did he really read them and and absorb the information, the content in the newsletter? Obviously, the dot project also had no effect. I don't think he Since read. He still believes in the traditional concepts of heaven. The gospel, etc., etc. I don't think he reads the newsletter. I don't think he really pays attention. Comprehends. I, 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 I doubt if you if he reads the newsletter word for word. I highly doubt that. Well, there's something wrong. Something is more powerful in getting a different message that brain why does um, why does a stupid uh, entertainment industry video on YouTube get millions of hits and our show does not get multiple millions of hits honey boo boo got many more hits than we ever had why do certain unimportant things get millions of hits and important information on the internet does not? Simply because Education. they are unimportant. People are avoiding learning the real hard-hitting truth. They are avoiding it. That's correct. That's why I've always said, if you are going to preach of the real truth, you will be dead. You will have a small audience. You will be prevented from, in some way, getting your message out. All these things will happen to you. They took and killed the greatest preacher that ever lived. 
Jesus. And he only what reached. He, he only reached uh, a little over a hundred. Right? In the end, I believe it was only a hundred and twenty people who believed. Yes, yeah. he fed five thousand at one time. So they ate his food. They saw his. But didn't believe the message. They, they saw his miracle. His miracles. Not all. Because he hid them. He didn't, it wasn't. You would have known his miracles at the time and everything. They would. You would have been spared. No, he would have. He would have been drawn before Pontius Pilate earlier on. In his life. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the the powers that be really didn't would have want. Would have acted much sooner. They really didn't want um, no, somebody God. that good to be doing good. That that much good for the people. God had a plan and a timetable, and He didn't want to. Uh, well, it up. if uh, if if you know? Jesus was there, not to make the ultimate sacrifice, uh, Jesus and God uh, could have smited the uh, the uh, King Herod and the Romans and everything. But I just said a while ago that God wants to save everyone. And to do that, he had to have yeah. someone to pay the penalty for sin, right. which is death. Not hell, it's death. Burned up, made to dust, and blown away. You will never exist again. Non-existence. Total. Non-existence. No, uh, no uh, immortal soul that flies out. Go to the light. Go to the white light. Head for the tunnel of white light. Yeah, and, right. and your relatives are standing there waiting for you. And how about that kid on uh, YouTube that was in heaven? Malarkey. Yeah. It was, uh, what was his first name? David Malarkey? Irish Malarkey. <laughs> yeah, that was his last name, Malarkey. Malarkey was his last name. So you feel that was a lot of Malarkey? Of course it was. You know, we got a lot of hits for that show. It was show. baloney. We got a lot of people mad at us for That's that show. It was. Well, why would they be mad at us? All they have to do is read the Bible. Because they they want to, Read Revelation 22. They, they want to believe that um, that you can walk alongside uh, and have a conversation with God right now about everything. Which God? I don't know. Oh, see, that's even the, that's even one of the problems. That people don't know how many gods are mentioned. You know, who. who Ooh, or well, the if, you're, if you're saying it's not, it's not biblical to have a conversation with God today, then it I'm can't saying, be can't be the God of the Bible that they're talking I'm to. I'm saying that there are two gods in the Bible. John one verse one. The one God became human. He now is an intercessor. You can speak with him. But you cannot speak with the Father. Then, no one can. Then, then how, how do you account for that word you told me called Elohim, the combination? Of, uh, what does that have to do with talking to somebody? Well, you said that, you said that uh, the Creator was most likely the Spirit that became Jesus. The Not most likely. That's the one who, be, the, the God that be, became Jesus. Jesus created the universe. Right. Now the Father is higher up. Hierarchy and in the, heaven. And he's not the one that got in there and created. No one has ever seen the Father. Except. Except Jesus. Jesus, right. That's great. But that's another thing. That's what I'm saying. These people have these ideas. They come up with these traditions. that go back in history, etc. There are two gods mentioned in the Bible, the Father 
and Jesus. And they, they existed. The Word and the Father. And they existed at the same time, right? It was on Throughout eternity. And then the One creates the universe. It's all there in John 1, verse 1. And then you read Revelation 22. And you'll see that God the Father brings his throne to the earth to become the center of the universe. Not heaven. Not us flying up there. While you're sitting around playing harps. Yeah, not us flying up there. He will descend with uh, New Jerusalem. That will already be in effect. New yeah. Jerusalem. He will come and yeah. eventually bring his throne down here, and the earth will become the center of the universe. Well, if you want to listen to uh, the God Project on demand archive classics, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Just type in uh, Mega Life 21, the God Project uh, uh, archive classics, whatever, the God Project, and it'll come up. It's on a playlist. And also, you can listen to the God Project by. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman every Sunday, uh, which will be tomorrow, on, on our radio station, which is at the top of newslettercensor.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, before you criticize, read. See, that's the one, one of the other problems with people, especially in religion and politics. They're always ready to give you their opinion or their criticism, but they've not read that which, which, which they criticize. If you did away with all the posts on the internet that are unsubstantiated, that are not backed with, with facts, with proven fact, it would probably remove most of the posts 95 percent that are on the internet yeah and then you have the gibberish you know people just talking out of their ass well that yeah. mostly people talking to their families no no, no. i'm talking oh. about people talking on our group on our political oh, group, well, group or do, uh, progressive discussions there are people who are talking out of their ass who sound like your brother robert eisenman that's correct you have that's because people have opinions, and uh, opinion is, you know, is, is like an asshole. Everybody has one. Yeah. But, but that I don't mean, mean it's right. I mean, they say you you don't know the truth. Exactly. You say they don't, they know, don't know the, the truth. truth. But I don't say, I say something other than that. Check it out. Check it out, which they don't do. There you go. No. See? Okay, what are we doing? On time, we're done. I would say so because this is a pretty longy. Oh, you mean the, the now save it for next time, save that one for next time. All right, thank you for joining us for progressive discussions. Uh, happy Mardi Gras and Carnival, Fat Tuesday, happy end of winter. Not yet. We'll say that after after St. Patrick's Day. Uh, that would be before that. Because March, tw uh, March 21st or 22nd? I think at the end of this week, Friday, we start in the 40s. We should be 45 at this time of the year. Okay. Anyway, Happy Fat Tuesday, uh, Carnival, Mardi Gras, uh, the day after. Uh, uh, Fat Tuesday is the first day of Lent, which the Catholics call Ash Wednesday. And that's when they go to church and they get the, the sign of the cross in, in, in black ashes put on their forehead. Yeah, that's supposed to be penance. They're doing penance. In the old days, the Roman Catholic Church sold, sold indulgences. Soul. Which was supposedly forgave sin or protected your uh, parents or whoever was in pain.
purgatory. Supposedly. Martin Luther came out and said this stuff is bullshit. They didn't like that very much. When I used to work with seafood uh, on Ash Wednesday, <laughs> everybody would come in and buy up all the cod and, and uh, flounder and the, they would uh, eat fish. Yeah. Catholics would eat the fish. Se so. The festival of the seven fishes. Really? Yeah. So they buy the seven fishes to have at the is festival. It, is this a, uh, an ancient... It's, a, it's a, an Italian thing. You're Italian, man. I never heard of the Festival of the Seven You go fish. home and you ask your mother about the, the Seven She fish. don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll Google it. I'll Google yeah, it. Yeah, okay. The Festival of the, the Seven, seven fishes. fishes. We'll see you. Oh, boy. The, oh, boy. I, you know, speaking of Festival of the Seven Fishes, I had uh, delicious broiled salmon filet last night. Oh, boy. Yes, I did. And it was very good. I had a big one. Oh, boy. All right. We'll see you. Say goodbye to these people. So long, people.